KFSR and CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger, a public affairs program featuring stories from all over the Central Valley with Sivag Tediosian, 90.7 KFSR. Welcome to another edition of the Central Valley Ledger. We're recording out of the beautiful downtown Fresno studios of the Community Media Access Collaborative, Fresno and Clovis, not too far from Fulton Street. Used to be a mall, now it's a street, and believe it or not, there's some businesses opening up on there, so come out and check out downtown, check out Fulton Street. Today, we have a gentleman that I'm sure you know of. I met him years ago. He was very active in the community then, and he's still active in the community now. Mr. Larry Powell, sir, welcome to the program. Savag, nice being with you. I, I love the studio here. Yeah, this is CMAC, Community yes. Media Access. And you look good in it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but I'm shining because I have you next to me. Oh, Let's just be you. clear. Um, so last time we talked, it was at the radio station at KFSR. Yes. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing, and, and what a community benefit this is. Uh, if you want to do something spectacular in uh, radio, television, those kinds of things, this is the place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I agree with you. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, let's start with a little bit of your background for okay. people who may not know, because they see you out there. Now you're involved <laughs> in several things, but tell us a little bit about the... Um, tell us a little bit about... You were a teacher? Uh, yes, I started out in the, in the classroom like most uh, educators do. So I spent some time in the classroom and I love that because I taught American government and marriage in the family. <laughs> and I kind of related as two kinds of civil war. So it was, it was a good time. I spent 14 years in the classroom and then I ended up being a curriculum director and then I started my path down outside classroom activities ending as the Fresno County Superintendent of Schools. And I want to stop you there. So we were talking off air. You were a principal at some point at Tanaya? I was a principal at Tanaya. I was a principal at Kings Canyon Middle School. So I had my time with kids, and I love that particular part of life. Uh, kids are amazing, and they are all so bright, and they are all gifted. I like to say that every kid is a gift and also an irritation. A teacher's job is to reduce the irritation and enhance the gift. So that's what we work on. <laughs> You know what, I, we, we're going to go down a couple of different paths today <laughs> because I, I see your passion for, for education oh. and children. So let me ask you a question. Sure. Parents like myself, you know, our audience members know that I have three kids. Yes. One is getting ready to start kindergarten. So what kind of advice would you give someone like me who is kind of looking around at what school to place the kid in? Sure. You know, the most, most common best advice I can give is like check out the school but like the school that you have your kids in because your kids pick up everything about you if you go in and you badmouth the school <laughs> the kids know it and all of a sudden something that didn't bother them now bothers them so there are so many great lessons to learn from a parent liking a school being involved in a school if you are the kids will actually thrive. They've done some really interesting research that the, the teacher doesn't have to be the best teacher. The curriculum doesn't have to be the best curriculum. If the parent likes the school and supports the kid in the school, the kid will thrive. It's a fascinating study that's been done. So we have around us some schools that are more challenged than other schools. Sure. Let's be honest. Absolutely. A kid going to those schools automatically failure? No. Correct. Absolutely not. In fact, if you take a look at some of the, the hero kids that come out of some of the darkest places, it's because they focused on being educated. They took advantage of the opportunities that were there. And my entire career, in a lot of ways, was spent south of Shields. So I worked with families and kids that had the toughest challenges. And interestingly enough, I've seen some of them make it to places like Harvard and Berkeley and MIT and, and CIT and th those kinds of things because they understood that education was their ticket to their entire family becoming a successful family. And parents that support those kids in that dream, give them the dream, then they can reach it. Don't give them a dream, they don't know where to go. So every parent needs to have a dream for their kids that they share with their kids so it becomes the kid's dream, not just the parent's dream. So we read to our kids already. Yes. We sing to our kids already. Perfect. Before bedtime, 
after their bath, yes. they get story time. What other things can parents do to help their kids move forward and become successful? Yep. And the reason I ask the question is, as you know, we have a lot of challenges oh, in absolutely. front of us as parents and as kids. Yes, yes. Uh, stories log into long-term memory. Uh, when you give kids a sense of who they are and stories, I love to tell stories about my grandfather. My grandfather would pick me up in his old Rambler and he would go <laughs> to a, a street corner and he'd look over and there'd be a Cadillac next to us and he'd say, that Cadillac's not going to beat my Rambler. And then he would race across the, <laughs> the intersection. The only thing was the, the Cadillac never knew they were in a race. You know? <laughs> but for me as a kid, my grandfather was the special man who made life fun for us. And then he would take me down to the, the dog house or the, it was actually a, a place in Sanger. And we would get uh, a hot dog and then I'd get a root beer and he'd say, do you want another? And it was a 10 cent thing, you know? <laughs> my memories of my grandfather are really amazing. And so share those things that give kids history, they give them perspective, they connect them to who they are. And so my dad did the same kind of thing. He would come home from work and he did something really special for me that I think you can do for your kids as well. He would come home and say, Larry, here's a situation I had. He had 300 employees. He said, this person did this and this person did that. What would you do? And I'm seven years old. And I would give him some silly answer, and then he would say, okay, I see what you're thinking, but let me tell you what I did and why. Great advice. It's fantastic because I never have been afraid to make decisions because my dad built into me decision-making when it was safe. So build in your kids the chance to make those decisions when there's nothing around that can hurt them, and then they get confidence that they can make good decisions. So when I became county superintendent, I didn't fear making decisions. Dad had already built into me <laughs> that I could make good ones. And so it was, it was a fantastic lesson. I had my own personal board of directors through Dad. <laughs> you know? So uh, I was never afraid to make decisions. Mom was humorous, never let me be afraid of anything. Uh, she did some really neat things. I got elected student body president at McLean High School back in 1965. And so I came home. She high-fived me, gave me a big hug took the dish towel and said, your turn, Larry. So she kept me with perspective. Because I achieved something didn't make me better than somebody else. And I love that from her for that lesson she taught me. And it's one thing you can teach your kids. Success is good, but overcoming adversity is better. You see, I, I had polio in 1949, mm -hmm. but I don't limp up here. I only limp down here because of mom and dad. And they gave me a sense that I could accomplish anything I want. Now, I don't run the 100-yard dash, but I can drive it, so who cares? <laughs> you know? So that's kind of the perspective they gave me. Ever since I've known you, and it's been years now, yeah. you don't stop. Like, you just keep, <laughs> I mean, if I were to compare you to a, someone driving a car, your foot is on the gas, full it, throttle. It, it is. What makes you keep going? Well, you know, we all have an obligation to do something special when we've been given so much. Uh, so I have to give back. Uh, as a person who technically retired as county superintendent about five years ago, uh, I, I, I never am going to retire. I may slow down a little bit, but I'm calling it refired. <laughs> I, I'm making movies with Alan Autry, acting in them and helping distribute them and, and talking about his movies. Uh, I've got a radio show uh, called Good News with Larry Powell. You can hear it five days a week. Um, I'm a political analyst for, analyst for a couple of, of stations. Uh, I just think it's, it's incredibly important that you never stop because when you stop, you stop growing. Uh, I'm a full-time pastor at People's Church here in town. Uh, my job is community connection. So how do we connect the community to the things in life that are really good about us? And that's part of what I'm doing. So you, you talked about McLean High School. You talked yes. about Sanger. So you're local then. I mean, were you born here? I was born in Sanger, California. <laughs> spent six months there, and then immediately Dad moved to Fresno. So all of my schooling was in Fresno. I, I love this place. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing city, and I've been granted uh, tremendous uh, support from everybody over my years here. So I have to give something back. I don't have a choice. Sometimes when I talk to people, they say, you know, when we lived, around Shields, Shaw, there was nothing north of Shaw. So you remember those days. Oh, absolutely. In fact, <laughs> if you went to Bob's Big Boy on Shaw and Blackstone, you, it was a trip to get there. It was a long ways out. Now, as you know, Shaw's about the middle. 
So uh, I've seen all of the growth. They had these nodules out on uh, Herndon and uh, north on Blackstone. You never thought that land would ever be developed, let alone uh, be unique like it is now with River Park and all of the things that are going on out there. Uh, we're very fortunate in Fresno. We've had people of vision see what Fresno could be and take and go and do it. And uh, I, I just like that. I like our government has actually done a pretty good job over the years. There have been some times I haven't agreed with some things they've done, but I'll tell you what, they had vision. They had a sense that Fresno could be a major city. We are 34th in the, in the nation in size of cities. People often forget. That's pretty big. We're, we're a big city. You know, you think about that. We are a big city. And we sometimes, we diss ourselves when we have to understand Fresno is a unique place, and I love the people of Fresno. Think about this. We have 101 languages in Fresno. That's impressive. It is. It's fantastic. You want good food? Man, you can get Armenian food, Italian food. You can get uh, Hmong food. You can get all kinds of food. You like Thai food? You can get Thai food. You like a, a good hamburger? You can go to Colorado Grill and get a good <laughs> hamburger. I mean, there's something here for everybody, and that's that's such a unique thing. I love this place. Tell us a, a little bit about wh why you decided to climb the ladder. You, you were a principal. Yes. And then you became Central Unified School District superintendent. superintendent. Yes. And then from there you made the jump. Yes. What was the reason for that? Well, let me tell you what was happening. Um, I, I think I treat kids really well. Uh, I see who they can be. Uh, Ruben Navarrete, who is a national columnist, uh, and he's on Fox and a whole bunch of other programs, he's on CNN, you name it, was a student of mine in Sanger. And one of the principals he had said to him, uh, why don't you sign up for some of the local colleges just in case, and didn't give him a sense that he could be anything he wanted to be. This kid was bright. Uh, and, and I talked to him about that. I said, you could go to Harvard, you could go to Yale, you could go to Berkeley, you could go to any school you want to go because he was a very, very gifted writer. Well, I, I felt that I wanted to make sure I was in leadership roles that could help teachers understand what kids could be and not push them down, not uh, give them low-level dreams, but give them high-level dreams. You can only do that from positions of leadership. You, you bring up a very interesting point. So Let's say, you, let's say that my kids in the future yeah. can get into like the Harvards and the Yales and yeah, stuff yeah, like absolutely. that. So you would say go. Yes. And see, I'm leaning there now more. Originally, I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. I want them to stay here. I want them to stay local. But there's a, something with kids that also explore, correct? Yes. What you want, though, is you want to you build in them a sense that go and experience it, but come back and contribute. Mm -hmm. But for me, I chose to stay at Fresno State because I'm a local guy. I love my experience at Fresno State. I was well-educated. I got to wrestle there, uh, and, and I, I did a great job in wrestling. I, I had the chance for my family to watch me. So my brothers, uh, you know, my brother ended up going away. My sister stayed here. So within our family, we had those that left and those that stayed. All have prospered. So it's a matter of what you, you feel. Uh, I think Fresno State and Fresno Pacific are two of the best universities in California. So we have the chance to stay if we want, but, but if you have a dream that's really, really big, go for the big dream, too. And both are good paths. That's the thing. And as a parent, you talk to your kids and you get a sense of that. Some kids are going to do really well home. Some are going to do really well away. But I want all of them to come back and contribute because Fresno is a great place. What things should people look for in children to find out what their interests are? Because I, yep. I ask you the question because sometimes you hear kids that want to be designers or sure. they want to be sure. musicians or actors or a actresses. Yes. And then sometimes their parents will say, you know what? No, no, no. You need to be the doctor, <laughs> the lawyer, no, absolutely. whatever. Expose them to everything you can. Expose them to art, music, dance, drama. Uh, expose them to good, high-tech kinds of programs, expose them to academic programs at Fresno State that they offer for kids, you know, uh, with the Arnie Nixon Center for, for books and things. So get them as much exposure as possible, then see what they like, see where their passions end up. I have a couple of, I have four grandkids, but I have a couple of grandkids, one daughter, one granddaughter who is going to be, I think, a, a, an extraordinary artist. And I, she can draw, she's 11 years old, she can draw anything you can ever imagine. 
and I'm not good at that, but she is. So you encourage the passion when you see it in them, but encourage an expansion of, of what they're able to do. Don't get them locked into one thing really early because you may miss out on something that they're really good at later. Uh, so expose them to as much as you possibly can. And I like them to have generational experiences. So expose them to grandparents, expose them to people that are storytellers, expose them to all kinds of things because somebody telling them a story may uh, engender in them this passion of, wow, I could do that, you know? And so uh, I wanna do as much as possible with that kind of thing. And you as parents can do that because what are your passions? A lot of times kids end up in the same thing. Mm -hmm, doctors mm -hmm. become doctors, you know, yeah, that kind of yeah. things. But some kids end up being doctors when their parents pump gas. You know, so help the kid realize the dreams that they have and that they can achieve those dreams and that money should not be an obstacle to the dream. In America, we're very fortunate. If you are really good at something and pursue it, we'll find a way to finance you getting to it. That's the whole thing. So uh, if you love something, go for it and don't say, well, I don't have money. Somebody will help you out if you have the passion for it. So after, great advice, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. A after you got done at the Fresno County Office of Education. Yes. You were still involved in the community and then an interim position opened up and you turned down a big amount of money. <laughs> Tell us the story because in today's society, as you know, yep. money talks. Well, But for you, that wasn't the case. Well, I've been offered uh, jobs not just within Fresno, but uh, in Los Angeles that were huge, huge jobs. But I, I never followed the money. Let me, let me share with you just one thing that happened uh, that I retired and decided to work for two years for nothing. Um, I think we have an obligation, when you are financially well off, you have an obligation to give back. So I ended up returning basically $830,000 <laughs> to the county of Fresno to help keep 22 jobs and to do some things that I thought were really critical. It ended up making national headlines, which we did not intend for that to happen. I, I did it during the summer when it would not be a big deal, but. Uh, the Associated Press got hold of it and, and did some things with it. But I want to tell you something really special. My wife had donated her entire retirement from uh, the, about 2002 till 2012. I was so ten far... Ten years. Ten years. I was so far behind her on donating back to the community that I felt I had to do something in order to do the same kind of thing. So uh, we ended up uh, donating a lot of money back. Uh, a lot of people benefited. We benefited from it. I now have a legacy that is available to my grandkids to look back and say, okay, Grandpa, uh, Papa, what did you do that gave back? So that they learn giving back is something that you do. When Fresno Unified opened up, I offered services to Fresno Unified for 40000 uh uh, for the period Which is of time, not much for no, an you're making, executive. You're making maybe twenty-five, thirty thousand a month in that job. Uh, and had it been the right thing for their board to choose me, I would have been willing to do it. They went in another direction that I think was really good. One, Bob Nelson ended up being in the interim position and has been a perfect per leader for that particular district right now. He bridged the gap between Mike Hansen and moving into where he is now as the full-time. Uh, superintendent. It has been in a lot of ways seamless. I think I could have offered some things to them, but I'm glad they picked him because it was the right thing to do. But I wanted to make my services available if they th thought it was a good thing for them at the time. They went in the right direction. Uh, I would have had to give up so many things that I'm involved in to do it. So thank you in a way that I didn't end <laughs> up having to, to sacrifice and do that. Uh, I ended up uh, in, a, in so many ways in a better position. So make your services available. If those in charge want to use it, great. If they don't, you've made the right decision. So tell us a little bit about your radio show because uh -huh. as we're talking, this is airing on radio and television. Yes. But this is not anything new for you because you're on radio. <laughs> well, uh, I have a show called Good News with Larry Pouts on five days a week. Perfect. I'm sorry if I interrupt <laughs> you, but perfect title for someone like you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know what I did is um, when I retired, I said I want to still be involved in, as a voice to the community because for eight years I was on Channel 30. Uh, I was on, uh, you know, radio stations and, and talking about eye on education and doing some really, you know, good things to pump the community up. I didn't want that to stop. So I went to a good friend in, in iHeartMedia and I said, uh, how about if we come up with a show that I can do 
and I'll do nothing but good news stories, much like Paul Harvey did. <laughs> and Paul Harvey has, hasn't been around, obviously, for a long time, but people still remember the stories from Paul Harvey. So I'll tell a story. At the end of the story, I'll go, now that's good news. So that's the tagline, and people are now sending me stories. <laughs> and iHeart app, you can hear this uh, good news with Larry Powell anywhere in the world now. I get cards and letters from Pennsylvania, from all over the place, from Washington. And they, I was on a plane once, and it was really interesting. I'm telling uh, something to my wife. We're having a fun conversation. And in the back, somebody goes, is that the good news, man? <laughs> and I went, now that's good news <laughs> with Larry yeah, Powell. Yeah, yeah. And they all laughed and things. But I, I think it's important that you find an avenue that you can share good things that are going on. So they'll be as, as folksy as a little story that, that I tell or as, as hard as uh, cops, you know, finding stupid criminals. Now that's good news <laughs> when you find a stupid criminal. You know? And that gains <laughs> so, attraction as well because people it, are interested. It does, it does. And I'll tell something now that somebody will send me. And so they'll send me a story and, about their hometown or something like that. I do a lot of stories about Fresno because we have great stories here. Uh, so, but it's a matter of the first 10 were real easy, and you being a writer, you being a storyteller in a lot of ways, uh, the first 10 were easy. The last 1,300 have been a lot more work. <laughs> so I've now got over 1,300 stories That's that so I've impressive. told. And I'm going to put them in a book. And the book is going to be Good News with Larry Powell, but it's going to be a daily devotional. So it's going to take the fact that I'm a pastor at People's Church. I'm going to use a scripture. I'm going to use a story that I've used on my good news. And then I'm going to say how it applies to us in life. So what should we learn from this? And so it'll be a daily devotional. You can go pick it up, and it'll be about six months before it's out. Uh, but it's a good chance to find out what's going on in life. And there'll be a lot of stories in there. There'll be uh, 365 of them at least. There's another thing tied into here, and that's no. a smile. <laughs> when I see you, you're always smiling. Well, you, you genuinely like to ask people how they're doing. Absolutely. Why is that important? Well, uh, you know, I think you get so much more out of life. Uh, if you want to smile, give a smile. And I learned that a long time ago. I also learned a really valuable lesson as student body president. Um, I had one guy uh, say that when I was student body president, I walked past him and didn't say anything. And I did not want to be seen as that kind of person who was uh, snooty or nose in the air. So I learned a great lesson with that. So I ended up being the guy that's walking in the hallways going, hey, Savag, how you doing? Hey, nice <laughs> to see you. And pretty soon it became a part of who I was. Recognize other people and their abilities and their value and those kinds of things. And a smile attracts people to you. Uh, I also learned from an interesting guy that I don't have as much respect for as I used to, but President Bill Clinton. When I met him here, my wife hosted him at Daily School, a school you and I have talked about, but at Daily School when he was here in town. And he had a magnetism about him. If you were Republican, Democrat, or Independent, when he spoke to you, there was nothing else going on in the world. And so I learned a lesson from that as well. So I've, I've seen a couple of great examples of be fully there with somebody if you're with them. Don't talk like this and then over here and oh, over here and, and keep talking. Be connected when you're, you're doing that. And it makes a tremendous impact on them. So I, I like to draw out of other people, what is your passion? What are the things you're good at? I know you've got some gifts. Start using them for your family, for your community, for your church, wherever that is. And so that's been a part of, I, I'm going to smile. And I have people say now, <laughs> they've not seen me without a smile, and they probably won't. Optimism. Yes. We're running out of time this week okay. on the program, but optimism. Does it wear off? Can Optimism, it wear off on other no, people? It, you know, people catch it. You Can, know, do people catch it? Absolutely. Uh, if I am, I'm around somebody who's optimistic, I seek to be around them. I learned a really important <laughs> lesson, and that is this. The people you choose determine your future. So if you want to have a successful future, pick successful people who like life, who encourage you and build you up. Uh, I say this a lot. A word spoken cannot be retrieved, and even though forgiven is not easily forgotten. So guard your words. Make sure the words you speak build up and don't tear down. So good news with Larry Powell. When, when and where can they hear it? 10.30 and 4.30, Monday, Monday through Friday on 96.7 FM and 1400 AM. And you get the topics just randomly, or how do you come up with the topics? Uh, I come up with 10 new ones every two weeks. So uh, I've, I'm scrambling all the time looking for good things to say and 
People send them to me now. I read vociferously. Uh, I read every online blog you can find to see what good is going on. So, and Do you think that's made you a better person? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, it's biblical in a lot, of, a lot of ways. Think about the good things and you become good. So I'm going to think about what's good, what's uh, healthy, what's of good report. Uh, if you dwell in the, the bottom of life, life will never be good. If you stay on the top, you're always on the top. Could it always be worse? <laughs> I, I think it could, but you know, like I said, I don't limp up here. Yeah, I only limp yeah. down here. I think polio is one of the best things that ever happened to me. I say that, I ask that question because every time someone asks me, how are you doing? I say, I'm yeah. doing great because yeah. I don't want the other side. <laughs> if I, it could be much worse. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're blessed. Larry Powell, thank you so much for coming on this Enjoyed week. Enjoyed it very, very much. That's all for this edition of the Central Valley Ledger. You have been listening and watching the program with guest Larry Powell, Mr. Larry Powell. I'm sure you've, you've heard him on the radio, you've seen him on TV. Here he is in studio. Thank you to the volunteer crew that make this production and every production possible. The technical director for this evening has been Paul Starsevic. Thank you for that. Thank you to those listening to this broadcast on KFSR 90.7 FM and to those watching on CMAC, Comcast 93 and AT&T 99. We hope you enjoyed the program this week. Tune in next week to a new edition. KFSR and CMAC present the Central Valley Ledger every Sunday morning at 1130. For complete program schedule, visit kfsr.org.